Hey guys, it's Jenny with Art for Good. So I am excited to share a painting that I did here today with you. This is a classic combination of emerald and gold in sort of an abstract ocean wave kind of a uh, style. So let's get into it. Okay, so I have a Liquitex Gold here that I've thinned out to um, a pretty thin consistency. And I'm just gonna go around in the center of my canvas where I've sort of marked with a pencil where I want the wave to be, which is that middle section. I find that using a pencil ahead of time helps me create a composition and I seem to have better results with the composition than I do when I just wing it. Although it is still kind of fun to do that, let's be honest. All right, so next I'm also using a phalo green from Liquitex. And I'm just putting them in here, no rhyme or reason. I, um, I think that this is sometimes called a chaos pour where you don't have a base layer down, you're just putting down the paint and we're gonna use a hairdryer to blow it out. I have a titanium white. I do wanna point out that I did speed up this video, I think to about two times actual uh, speed, so don't be alarmed. I don't move this quickly in real life, but I wanted to, um, sometimes these videos can be quite long and I know that it's easier to follow when it's a little short. Here I have a little bit of the same phalo green that I have added some black to. Now black is very tricky when you're working with acrylic paint pouring. You have to use particular brands and you have to use particular shades of black to get the best results. I have had great results with a, an ivory black, which is kind of a softer uh, black color where it doesn't eat up all the other colors. If I use a Mars black, specifically like an Artist Loft brand, I have found it is completely terrible and it will eat every color you put on top of it or next to it and you'll get these giant black cells. So I'm just going through with my hair dryer. I don't want to overwork this paint. That is one way that you can get muddy colors is by going too many times over the paint or mixing the paint or swiping too much. That's when all the colors start to blend together and you get kind of a, a grayish color, which is not ideal. I'm gonna give this a quick torch to help some of those cells come out and to pop any air bubbles that have come into play. Now I'm going to, in the bottom section of this, going to use a, um, the darker green color. And I have an idea here that I'm gonna experiment with and I'm not sure if it's gonna work out quite well, but I'm gonna put down the gold first and I'm gonna put the green over the top and do a swipe over that. My go-to tool for doing a swipe is just a paper towel that I wet with a little bit of a spray bottle. So now I'm using um, actually a cake spatula, uh, which I find it's big enough for this type of a piece, which is, this is a very large canvas. I believe it's a 24 by 36 inch canvas here. So now I'm gonna go in and try to add some chameleon cells. If you're not familiar with this technique, it's just using a coconut hair serum and dipping a skewer or a toothpick in there and then just placing it on the canvas where you want the cells to appear. I really wanted this gold color to shine through uh, the green color, so that's why I did the swipe ahead of time.
Now remember, if you're gonna try this chameleon cell technique, you do need to remove that oil from the canvas once it's fully dry. Usually after it's been dry for at least a week, I just take a piece of cotton and some rubbing alcohol and just um, clean off the, any oil residue that I see on the outside of the painting. All right, I'm filling in the rest of that space with that dark green color, and I'm just using my hand to fill in any spaces on the canvas that are not fully covered with paint. As you, you'll notice, um, as I get a little farther in, I, ha I decide that I don't really love the chameleon cells here. So I do make an adjustment towards the end and that just goes to show you, you have the best plan in your head and when it gets onto the canvas, you have to be willing to just shift and change things up so that it really uh, stands out as something that you're proud of and that you know, you're happy to share with the world. So I'm going in with a straw to see if I can play around with this a little bit to see if I can get it to a place where I like it. Also filling in this little gap that I have in the middle here. Sometimes that happens when you do a chaos pour. You have to kind of keep going until you've covered each space on the canvas, but it's a lot easier to maintain your composition than it is to have a base layer. Usually you put a base layer down if you want the little cells to pop up of that base color. So for example, if I had a white base layer down before I had put any colors down, I would see all kinds of white spots and cells all throughout this painting. And I really wanted to keep the integrity of the colors. So I did not do it that way. So now I'm sort of getting to the point where I don't love the chameleon cells, so I'm gonna start working that out. And that is by scraping. I'm gonna scrape off this paint and unfortunately I don't have enough of the dark color, so it's gonna be a little bit lighter in this middle section that I'm gonna to have to replace that paint in. It's a good idea to make extra of the colors that you're using, especially if you're going to be mixing your own colors, because if you have to, at the end, say, touch up a piece, um, maybe a corner didn't get covered, it's very difficult to match that same exact shade as you were using after the fact. So just a tip there. All right, so I'm just going in with my hairdryer to make those two different shades kind of blend together and look a little more like water or fluid, like, um, you know, an ocean or a wave of some kind. Now, because I put that coconut oil in, sometimes it can be a little finicky where pieces of the canvas are completely bare because the oil is repelling that paint. So sometimes it takes a few extra minutes just to make sure all of the little spots are covered with paint. Now, I haven't quite decided if this painting should be hung as it's displayed here on the screen for you or if I should hang it uh, in a portrait mode where the sort of gray part uh, is on the left. So if you have any thoughts about that, um, put your thought in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. So now I'm working with a very light gray color. 
And unfortunately, at this exact moment, I had a uh, issue with my storage on my phone, but I did recover. So you did miss a little bit here, but not much. So I just filled in the uh, side of the painting where I have the gray and I went from like a dark shade up towards a lighter white color and then I kind of mix those together with my hair dryer a little bit not too much again I don't want it to be too blended I wanted to see that differentiation in color to give it some interesting sort of a light source effect I also am going in right now with a black spray paint so I have found this is a good trick to use when you want to add a little more depth or shadows to certain parts of the painting. It's also a good way to help establish negative space so that the eye kind of has a break and has a path to go towards the focus area that you would like, which is this light source area on the left in this particular uh, painting. I really love this classic combination of the gold and the emerald. Tell me what you think about this piece in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. Well, that's all the time I have for today. If you're interested in more of these styles of paintings, I have a whole playlist here that I will leave with you and I will see you again next time.